We need to focus on our clients, the quality work we deliver, the relationships that we have, and not worry about some of these other insignificant things like paying utility bills or making sure there's coffee in the coffee pot or is there ink in the copier. So you don't have to hire another person just to be at the office to receive things or meet with vendors. You know, those are things that you can be seamless to you and help you grow your business faster because you are the expert in design and you should focus on design. Have you hit a wall when it comes to growing your business? Then welcome to the Wingnut Social Podcast, helping home professionals and luxury brands accelerate their success with proven marketing strategies and expert industry practices. Now, here's your host, Darla Powell. This podcast is brought to you by Wingnut Social, a digital marketing agency amplifying luxury brands across the United States and Canada. For more information, go to wingnutsocial.com. Hey there, and welcome to Wingnut Social. I'm your host, the Grand Eye Poobah of all things here at Wingnut Social, a digital marketing agency for you guys, the interior designers. And today we are talking all about getting out of the house. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I have cabin fever. I'm getting a little lonely just kind of in my house working from day to day. And I love my team. I love working with them remotely. But sometimes you just want to see a real live carbon based life form. So today's guest is Mara Hauser. She is the CEO of 25 North Coworking Spaces and Offices. And we're going to talk all about how that landscape is changing. And what I found really super interesting, which is kind of like a happy medium, Mickey Dane, <laughs> listeners of a certain age might know who that is, a happy medium, get it, is that there's kind of a hybrid situation of maybe we don't feel like committing to a whole office and the expenses that that go with that. But we we want to see real life people. We want to network. We want our productivity you know, to increase. We want to network and increase our relationships in that way because we're we're human beings and that is important to productivity and and really just our our satisfaction our life satisfaction with our job. I think that's important for a lot of us. Even people like me and I'm not necessarily a, a hurting people kind of person. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling the the hit of just, you know, being by myself working from home all the time. You, you a little bit of a that loneliness sets in. You want that collaboration and cooperation and coercion. <laughs> How many C words can I think of? With uh, you know, human beings to work with. It's it's there's a lot that we get from that, among other things, which Mar is going to speak to. So stay tuned for that. But first, y'all know what time it is. It's time for mini news, mini news sesh. Yeah. yeah. All right. We welcome back Abigail Weidman. For the mini news sesh, our social media manager over at Wingnut Social, the social media marketing agency for interior designers. Abby, what do you have this week? Yeah, so this week I'm coming to you guys with a super interesting update regarding Facebook. And this is a feature that Facebook has been testing for quite some time, but it is now finally official. And that is that you will now be able to turn your regular old Facebook profile into a professional profile. Wait, what? So you're saying I could just take my personal Facebook page, Darla Powell, and make that a, a business-related professional page? How's that going to look? Exactly, exactly. So this is going to look just like it would if you were turning your Instagram profile into a professional profile. Facebook says that professional profiles will allow users to have access to post and audience and profile insights for their Facebook profile and also give regular Facebook users access to monetization tools. Wow. You know, I like this because the business pages themselves on Facebook, as I'm sure your social media manager have noticed that aren't really getting a lot of organic traction. So I've noticed a lot of the creators, a lot of the business people are actually just putting stuff out on their personal pages. Even people that come to me for Wingnut to ask about our services, just like, you know, I have my personal account. I just post there. I don't even bother with my business page. So it seems like they're just saying, you know what, that's a thing. Let's we might as well just make it, you know, an official thing. <laughs> exactly. And that's what's interesting to me is that you don't even have to have a Facebook page. It's just what? You know, it's it, it's your profile. It's just your regular profile. So oh, if you're I like okay. me and you've had your profile since you were like 10, you know, I have my kindergarten teacher, I have old <laughs> colleagues, I have, you know, college friends, but now I'm also going to have the ability to gain Facebook followers. So people will just just like you said, just like a business page be able to come on and see your content if you choose to switch to professional profile. Very cool. Very cool. I, I suppose there's that caveat there that if you're private, 
you know, and you only want your friends to see what you're posting, then that's a something you need to think about. Do you know if offhand, if Facebook's going to have uh, the ability to choose to whom you share? Mm -hmm. That is another feature that's kind of included in this. They haven't rolled out too much information on that just yet, other than the fact that it is going to be an option you can pick and choose from your followers and your friends. Um, And they're doing this, like you said, to kind of override the page aspect because those aren't performing too well. And then also to get younger users on the platform. We know that's something they've been trying to do for a long time. And so I personally feel like this is a great way to target those younger users and people who want to become social media creators and kind of influencers. You're a younger user yourself. Let me ask you how you feel about it. What's your gut say about it? Is this, would this make you on a personal level be more interested in using Facebook? I I don't think so. Because like I said, <laughs> you know, I have people that have been my friend on Facebook forever. And now, you know, my personal profile is kind of just regular old me. That's my life. And so yeah. if I wanted to be a creator, I would just bite the bullet and create a page. It's not that difficult anyway. Uh, one good thing I do see here in the notes that you sent over ahead of time is this if you do decide to go this route and it mm-hmm. doesn't work out for you, you can always just revert back to your just regular old, plain old profile. So, yeah. All right. So that's good. No harm, no foul. It's worth a, worth a shot. Worth trying, right? Yeah, worth trying. But again, personally for me as a younger user, I say just create the page. Create the page. Don't mess with it. All right. Okay. All right. Is it okay if I still try it? <laughs> yeah, I give you I give you permission, Darla. You can try it for us. <laughs> you can be our guinea pig. <laughs> All right, Abby. Thank you so much for joining us again on the Mini News Sesh. You have a great week. Thank you, Darla. You too. Mini News Sesh. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now let's get into my interview with Mara Hauser. But first, let me tell you a little bit about Mara. Mara guides clients' big ideas to executable designs that focus heavily on brand building and high-level analysis, including programming, product, and amenities mix, adjacency diagrams, and fleshing out an often overlooked question, who do you serve? To date, Mara has led ideation sessions for over 40 existing co-working company startups. Wingnuts, help me in welcoming... Mara Hauser to the podcast. Hey, Mara Hauser, welcome to the show. How the hell are you? I'm good. How are you, Darla? I'm doing really well, except, I, you know, I, I live, I recently told the listeners I've moved to Maryland because my fiance, she works at the the Navy base here in Southern Maryland. I can't tell you what she does. Or I'd have to kill you. But uh, there was a helicopter flying around <laughs> earlier. So if that, that pops up, sorry, there's nothing I can do for you. It's forgotten country. So <laughs> Mara, today we're talking all about office spaces and interior designers. Should you, shouldn't you, what that landscape is going to look like moving forward post COVID. And I have to to tell you, I work from home. I've always worked home, from home for the interior design firm and for Wingnut Social. And I tend to get cabin fever, even though I'm not necessarily like I have to go to the office people-y kind of person. And I've been kicking around, oh man, should I get out? Should I do some, you know, should I get an office or some kind of co-working space? And we're going to talk about that and what that looks like and the benefits and the pros and the cons. And uh, before we get into that, tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do, and then we'll dig in. Sure. I'm Mara Hauser and thrilled to be with you, Darla, today with your listeners. Uh, My background is corporate interior design and been doing it for a significant time. I still do have an interior design studio, which is called Workplace Studio. And we mostly focus on um, corporate environments, including flexible office space. So our specialty is around collaborative, innovative, inspirational workspace. So As a workplace strategist, we work really hard in making sure we bring culture and brand to the workplace for whoever our clients are. Also, I am the CEO and founder of uh, 25 North Coworking, which is a flexible office provider. We are in three markets right now. We're in the D.C. area. Actually, we're in Alexandria, Virginia, so that's kind of fun. We're also in the Chicago metropolitan area, and we are also in Frisco, Texas, soon to open in Waco, Texas. So... It's really exciting time for co-working and, you know, obviously assisting, you know, the, this whole COVID thing and work from home really progressed the co-working movement to where it would have been in 2030, you know, and here we are in going into 2022. And a lot of people understand, you know, that working from home works, but it's not the best, like you said, so. Yeah, I mean, everybody, I think, is spoiled 
with the pandemic from working from home, but I think it's been going on so long that we are kind of starting. It's like like having a baby. Like you forget how painful it is. You want to have another one. <laughs> We're like, oh, I kind of want to go back to the office. I kind of miss hanging out and socializing or at least um, not being distracted by Netflix while I'm putting together this report or the, <laughs> this work for this client for sure. So you wear two hats like I did. I had Darla Powell Interiors in Miami, which is on pause right now for me to do full-time Wingnut Social, the marketing agency for interior designers. Just a quick aside before we dig into the co-working space, how are you doing both? How am I doing both? Yeah. Well, I have great teams. I have a studio manager for our interiors division, which is fabulous. And I'm an amazing director of operations who really helps manage the locations. My my focus is really the strategic outlook. And like I do a lot of the ideation sessions for our design team, but yet, and also lead the strategic direction for our co-working brand. So, you know, the legal, the accounting, you know, manage yeah. the executive team versus into the day-to-day weeds. So we're very fortunate. I have 27 employees that, you know, really do a lot of the the communication, the work and, you know, are helping us grow a really great brand. So nice. I love it. Well, congrats to you. That That's really amazing. So I did a few interviews back when this whole pandemic started with a, some t- Taylor Spellman uh, comes to mind first off, but interior designers who were pivoting and, and losing some of their office space and, and retreating back to that again, work from home, but giving up their leases and, and saying, you know what, this is going forward. I'm just going to keep doing this, keep working from home from my office. How do you see that changing or do you see that continuing on through the future? You know, as a mom and a wife and also as a business owner, you know, there was times in my life that, you know, we were at home too. And, or I had my company of like 14 people in my basement of my home. So you know, there are definitely advantages of it, but there are clearly disadvantages as well. And, you know, the home is great for some productivity, but again, if, if it's not set up where you can have other of your team members there or even your clients come in for presentations or meetings, I think that that in-person connectivity and a little bit of loneliness sets in. And there's just some other things that really go hand in hand with one, you can really, you know, some people can get a lot of work done at home. Other people have too many distractions. You, you talked about the the helicopter or the dog, like if there's kids or even yeah. there's a lot of partners who are both working from home and well, who gets the private room, you know, who gets the office? Can you both work together at the same time? So there's a lot of uh, distractions in that sense too. So we've had to shift, you know, in our co-working brand to make sure we accommodate to give permission to people who need to be at home, but also give them the ability to have a great place where they can go to get away to. So like we have now a lot of private offices with husband, wife that share the office. So they tag team or take turns. We have corporate team rooms where maybe uh, the company has 20 or 30 people that might use the space, but maybe five to seven are, are there at a time, but they know that they have a place to go. So there's a lot of different things, you know, that work around that. Tell me a little bit about what you mean by the hybrid model. How can interior designers utilize that? Any of you are probably hearing about this hybrid work approach. Well, like just a little background is that, you know, before the pandemic, most people who did work at home or like to work at home had trouble convincing their bosses or their corporations that it was really doable and it would be efficient and it would be secure that they could actually accomplish what they needed to do or more without the commute and some other things that go along leaving your home and going to work in, in a particular office space. So that's one thing, you know, corporations are getting in their mind, well, wow, you know, this did work. It was productive. We didn't miss a beat in a lot of cases. And while we pay a lot of money in corporate real estate taxes, you know, rent, you know, if you take uh, the all the dollars associated with a particular facility, divide it by how many people are there, you'd be just surprised how much, you know, this costs for a business. So could they become more efficient? How could they repurpose the space that they have to make it so when people do come to the office, it, one, it'll be really an amazing space and, and they get to come there and be alongside with the culture and the brand, which sometimes get missed if everyone is completely isolated and in their own hubs. Or how can we make it a combination so people don't feel like they have to be there all the time? And or someone who's at home says, I don't really want to be here every day, all day long. I need to meet with my team in person. I need to have ideation sessions. I want to be creative and I'm lonely. So the hybrid model uh, or the hybrid approach is having a combination of work from home 
or work from anywhere. So WFH or WFA. So work from anywhere means really you can work, you know, on a beach, you know, in at a ski resort. Um, you can work, you know, at a, a library. You can work at home. You can work at an office. But the hybrid would be a combination of work from home, work from an office, corporate office, work from a designated office location or where you can do a coffee shop, library, just, you know, a number of different places where you could do things. Or a third place would be a co-working location, which is an independent office environment set up in a neighborhood that you can go to that might have some other employees of the company. But typically, instead of 200 at a co-working space, instead of 200 employees working there, they, there'd be 200 independents that work for multiple companies that come together to do work. Right. So when you're an interior designer and you're considering working from a, a co-working space, I can see where that would be really important to to meet with people because we're creatives, right? As interior designers, we need to talk. We need to flesh things out with our designers or even sourcing or admin work or or that kind of thing. But what if you're an interior designer who's vacillating between working from home working from an office, but also have your vendor samples and stuff that you want to show clients. I guess the, the co-working space really wouldn't be suitable for that, right? That would be a consideration. You have a couple architects who actually work in marketing firms and do service businesses that do work in combination at our co-working space. So if you had a private office or if you had a dedicated desk, even you could leave some of your things there. A lot of locations, several of our locations have storage cages where you can use to keep samples and some other things. But you could really, you know, do the hybrid approach at co-working would work really great for an interior design firm because you could have your client meetings in the in the meeting room. So if you were just to have an office as an interior design firm, you would have open space, you would have private offices, you'd have to have coffee, you'd have your copier, you'd have meeting rooms, you've got all the things that make up the office environment. Right. But in a co-working space, you share all of that with others. So you only pay for what you need. You know, you could pay by, you know, someone else is taking care of the copier or someone else is making sure it has ink and paper and all those supplies are already there. You just pay for what you use. Meeting rooms, you could schedule by the hour or the day and even day offices. You could have people coming in and out and meeting with you, whether it's your employees or clients or vendors that come in for meetings. And the most important thing is you can have a virtual address as well. So instead of having your home address on, you know, you don't want people looking up on Zillow. Oh, where do they live? What do they pay? <laughs> now Google Earth. <laughs> yeah. You have a professional business address, which is searchable. So when you go in, you type the business, it'll come up with a map next to it and shows, oh, here's where the location is. That's only possible um, with like a real mail address, which you can do at co-working spaces too. So if you have a PO box or you have a home address, it, it will never be searchable. So that's big advantage too. And I like that too for um, if you're listening to any of the past marketing shows on SEO and, and marketing for Google, Google My Business is very helpful to actually have a, an address there so you can help verify. You can do it without the address, but it's just more helpful to have it and you can receive your mail there. It just looks it looks sharper. It looks better. I'm, I'm guessing at your co-working space that you have people that collect that mail and distribute it to the appropriate offices and, and all that. Correct. Different mail options, different levels. You can have a virtual office. Frankly, you can have like you get your mail and then you have five hours of either working days or a meeting room time and you can have mail to scan to you all the time. So you can have, you could say you have your office in five different cities and basically you pay to have those addresses and those co-working locations would scan you whatever you receive so that you are always on top of whatever mail you have, or you can have a different service where they just pop it in a bigger envelope and mail it to you. So kind of, they notify you, you have mail today. Here's who you have mail from. If you want us to open it and scan it to you, you could do that, or we could simply turn around and remail it to you. So a lot of design firms love that too, because you can have your vendors can deliver samples that way and, or, um, you know, whatever you're using in materials. So many samples right now, you know, most interior design firms don't have full libraries. You know, they have material bank and some other places that they call and order what they need. And then, you know, just for the sustainability reasons that, you know, they mail them back or ship them back. So having those mail services are really advantageous for the designer. 
That's right. For my projects at Darla Palantirs, we basically just kind of kept what was in the the universe around the projects that we were working, sent it back. We kept it pretty skinny. We did a lot of digital sourcing, um, Material Bank as well. We actually did have a shared office. Up there. We didn't utilize it to the extent that, that we're talking about here. We didn't take as much advantage of it with a, a permanent space in there, but we would rent out the conference room for presentations. And it is a great solution for the interior designer who's maybe not quite ready to have, you know, their own their own real estate. And which leads me to my next question. What size interior design firm do you think that this kind of solution is suitable for? In general, in a co-working membership, you can be one person to, you can have one office or one desk or just, you know, a random open in the flex area up to probably, you know, 3,000, 5,000 square feet. But don't forget when you're calculating how many square feet you need, take away the meeting rooms, take away the reception area, take away the cafe or any of the food service areas because, or even the production area because that's already provided. So you become much more efficient in what you pay for, what you need individually because these other things are amenity spaces are shared amongst the community. It's January. You know what that means. The holidays are in our rear view mirror, but clients are going to start coming out of the woodwork and resuming their design projects or starting the new design projects that they were putting off. And now you have to ask yourself, is your ideal client going to find you when they're searching on the Googles and entering in those keywords? Is your website ready and optimized for SEO so you pop up in their search results when they type in interior designer Chicago? Who, who's it going to be? Who, who's going to come up on that first page or in the beginning of that search? So you even have a shot, right? If your answers are no, then you're leaving money on the table or even worse, just uh, writing a check over to your competition who does have all their SEO ducks in a row. So what you're going to want to do is head on over to wingnutsocial.com to set up a chat with me to discuss getting SEO services for your interior design firm today. It makes a huge difference, especially local SEO. If you're looking for your ideal client in your local market, girl or guy, I should say, we do have men listeners, you need to get your SEO game on point. So head on over to wingnutsocial.com. Check us out. Check out the case studies there at the top of that nav. Check out what we're able to do for our clients and click contact me or let's chat or something like that on the website. (laughs) And we'll be happy to help you out. Again, that's wingnutsocial.com. Okay, so let's say you have interior designers listening to this and like, I like this, you know, I am lonely and I'm raising my hand. I'm getting a little lonely working from home myself. I want to do a co-working space or I want to at least get some kind of small office space myself. And let me venture back out there. How important is the design aspect of the office? You, you specialize in, in this. This is your jam. So tell us the kind of things that we need to make sure that we're doing in order for uh, us to be happy, healthy and productive in our offices. Sure. So talking about what an interior designer would look for in a co-working space, is that what you're asking? In a co-working space, sure. Or logistically speaking or design speaking, or even if they're just going to throw, you know, get their own little office space and do some kind of hybrid thing. Mm -hmm. So really important is to have the the best ideation spaces, you know, with some heads down space, some ability where you can focus. So focus zone. And then the other one would be like when you need to collaborate, what are the best tools you can have? So the biggest thing in design right now would be the flexibility and being, you know, having diverse workplace. So how can you convert or transition spaces to be multi-purpose? Maybe it's a team room at one time. Maybe it becomes a collaboration innovation hub. Maybe it's the quiet room. So everything on casters is really what we're looking for and mobile ability to project. So using technology, Zoom rooms, having hybrid meetings, which means you have some people in the room and some people on Zoom. How do we accommodate for that? So there are some acoustics that have to go with that. Power in multiple locations. Natural light is really big or lighting is really important because, you know, in now that you're on Zoom, you know, see, oh, you see every wrinkle or, you know, what doesn't show up or what doesn't, what does your background look like? Those are really important. So that would be really one thing. Um, Ideation zones, what they look like, being able to convert them for whatever the need is, that helps you maximize your ability to for function but minimize square footage the other thing would be for me is really a big point is um, outdoor space either outdoor workspace or outdoor meeting space i call it a porch 
So like it just think about when you were working from home or to sit down, the best thing to do is to get fresh air, to be able to go outside, go for walks. But we can do all these really great things and the natural light, all the biometrics, all the things that are really good that make us feel better will work in a workspace in a meeting room as well. So that's very important. And the ability to be sustainable. That's another really big push right now. We don't need just throw away water bottles or disposable things. We just want to make sure that we're environment environmentally conscious with fresh air, good HVAC, you know, clean water and, you know, real dishes glasses and think about all the things that are disposable. I think being conscious as a designer, you want to practice what you are preaching. You know, yeah, your- I think it's important too when you have, especially if you're going to have client meetings in the room. <laughs> and if you're a biophilic designer and your your office isn't reflecting that, there might be a little bit of a disconnect. Mara, what would you say to the interior designer that has an office space that wants to downsize and do a shared office space, do a hybrid office space? Who's Listen, as creatives, as interior designers, uh, we sometimes can be a little bit of control freaks. <laughs> you know, we get a little bit nervous that, okay, maybe if my employee or my designer is working from home, they're going to be fishing or they're going to be on Netflix and they're not doing their work. How do we counter that sense of anxiety or, or that need to control that? What kind of measures can we put in place? Because in my experience, have all my employees have worked from home. They've been a hell of a lot more productive. But sometimes you tell designers that and they're like, no. Well, what we've implemented with our design team is regular check-ins. So we have a weekly rating call where we talk about our wins, losses, and maybe um, challenges that we've had in the week. We also do a Monday morning and a Friday morning, beginning of the week, and here's our schedule, here's what we're working on, these are our priorities, Friday wrap-up, we call it. But then in addition to that, we have Zoom office hours, We just because we use Zoom. Um, so what that is, is, in, you know, a lot of times when you're in a studio, and if you're all together or you're not, there's a lot of that created creativity, discussion that goes back and forth. Hey, I'm looking for this. Do you have a vendor that you think of that goes with this? Or... I'm designing this elevation. What do you think about this? You know, how does this play in? So if you can open up kind of like Zoom office hours, everyone can kind of still do their own work, but you can still pop up your head and say, hey, what do you think about this? You know, look at this elevation and the ability to share, you know, in that hybrid mode, some people that are in the room or some people out. And the other thing too, is it gives everyone the ability to feel like they're part of the team instead of just, I'm doing my work. I have this many hours, like this day, I have so many meetings back to back, but I don't have time to like check in or say, Hey, how are you? You know, how'd your dog do today? I heard you had to take him to the vet, you know, is he okay? That kind of thing. So I think we're missing out on a lot of that. And it's really understanding what your culture of the business is and this community that you're creating for your own company. You need to sustain that, you know, internally for your business, but also even in the co-working space. So you can, you can do all of those things productively with, you know, the highest internet speed and some security and privacy with acoustics and sound, but yet still give your team members the ability to socialize. I mean, not just be social, but like interact with others, right? I love that. A friend of mine who's an interior designer with the Zoom thing where you could just have, you just have Zoom open and you're all there and you're working. You're not necessarily purposefully having a meeting or interacting, but you're kind of still all there together and you can spontaneously, like you said, hey, I need a vendor for this rug. I'm sourcing for this client. Just like if you were at the office and there's actually, um, my friend referred me and I can't remember the name of the app, but it's actually an app that does that where you can sit and write and in a Zoom meeting with like-minded people and it's kind of an accountability thing. So if you're sitting there and you're writing or, and you're on the Zoom, you can't really leave or, or, or screw, screw off <laughs> because they're going to know it. it's like, it's, it's a little bit different, but you know, as, as far as it's not a collaboration kind of thing, I can't remember what it is for the life of me, but I was like, like, no, I can't do that. Are you kidding me? Because I won't be able to walk out and, and check out my my Netflix. <laughs> One thing that's actually we should all be paying attention to, especially as interior designers, is people are tired of Zoom too. You know, so being on camera all the time or you know, dressing up or just being on, there's a lot of Zoom fatigue. Right. They have a name for it even because obviously it's more common than just a few, a handful of people. So how do we overcome that? So you know, gosh, pick up the real phone or just say, hey, do you want to have lunch or do you want to meet? Which is why I love the co-working spaces too, because then you, your head's down work, things that you have to do, you kind of 
check your boxes, do your tasks. But when you come together, you're there for really, you know, not just the conversation, but to work together and just like kind of check in and, and be more purposeful on that. So I think it's, it's also on the owner of the company or the manager to really call purposeful meetings and not just have them for random reasons, have an agenda, know exactly what you want to accomplish. And if you are going to have them commute to come into the office, make them valuable, make the, your employee or your client, you know, know that they're coming there to, you know, accomplish what needs to get done. But also to say during this time, we're going to ideate, we're going to come up with something that will get us to the next level. And then we'll take that home and we'll, you know, we'll be able to work independently. But when we come back together, what are the reasons for that? This next question I'm going to ask you, you might be a little biased being the CEO of a shared working space, but for the interior designer or the business owner out there who's only worked from home, who's never had an office space and just doesn't see for whatever reasons in their own head that they have a need for it. Tell me just a couple of points there on how it's just going to make them and their team more productive and pay for itself. Well, the people that you make and meet in a co-working space are many businesses. So sometimes you surround yourself only with people like you or only interior designers. But, you know, what I love about it is the networking aspect. So there's a marketing company, there's an accounting firm, there's a legal firm, there's someone else who's doing business, there's maybe an engineering firm or construction firm. We have banks or mortgage companies. So in the network of people that you meet, it's like you're out there networking without networking and you build trust and respect and you get to know these other businesses who add, could add great value to you and your business. So, you know, they also like you might have the same client, you don't even know it. But at the same time, every interior designer needs marketing expertise, needs um, the accounting person, needs the legal. So it's just really nice to have a network of other businesses that complement each other that, again, you build relationships with. That's one of the real reasons for co-working. I love that. I should get a wingnut space at your Alexandria office. I think there that's you the go. <laughs> I'm actually seriously considering it. And I love that the networking thing is so important in this digital age, which is important to market digitally, of course. Hello, I own Wingnut Social Marketing Agency for that. But I think we forget the importance of that, actually, that human connection in the six degrees of Kevin Bacon or whatever. And they know somebody and they know somebody and then the referrals and stuff. That's still super, super hella important. Mara, is there anything that I've forgotten to ask you about this subject before we move on? to the fire round. No, I think, you know, we covered a lot about the productivity of working at home and then the productivity of working outside of the home and what a hybrid means is maybe you're, you know, at home two days a week and at the office three days a week or vice versa and having the ability to be your best and be as most productive as possible, giving you the tools to do that. That's kind of what what we need as a business is not to focus on we need to focus on our clients, the quality work we deliver, the relationships that we have, and not worry about some of these other insignificant things like paying utility bills or making sure there's coffee in the coffee pot or, you know, is there ink in the in the copier? So or toner in the printer. Yeah, a toner. I'm out of toner right now. Like you don't have to hire another person just to be at the office to receive things or meet with vendors. You know, those are things that you can be seamless to you and help you grow your business faster because you are the expert in design and you should focus on design. I love it. It sounds like a very reasonable solution, especially the hybrid model. I think you've talked me into it. But now, Mara Hauser, I have to ask you, are you ready for the What Up Wingnut round? I am. Now it's time for What Up Wingnut. Wingnut. What would the hashtag on your tombstone be? Everything happens for a reason. Love it. You're stuck on a deserted island, but you can have your one favorite food. What's it going to be? Cheese. Cheese board. Oh, like a little charcuterie board, but with just cheese. Yeah. Yes, that's my favorite <laughs> all time food. I do love that. Please recommend a book that has had an impact on you either personally or professionally. Sure. Shoe Dog by Phil Knight. What is it? Shoe Dog. It's the story of the founder of Nike, Phil Knight. Oh, okay. All right, cool. Tell me, why did you like it? Oh, well. Anyone who started a business before is look for investors or is growing with a lot of pressure in a family should absolutely read the book. And if you listen to the audiobook, he actually 
has recorded the audiobook, which is great to hear to hear the story of a brand that is so well known and to know that they've gone they've had ups and downs and competition, how they came up with their logo, all the things that we do as a business, it just really resonated with me as something that, you know, knowing that who they are now and what they went through is just really, it was very inspiring. Awesome. Okay. So that's Shoe Dog. I'm going to put that in my audible queue. I am an audio book junkie. I can't get enough. I can't get enough of spoken word stuff. Mara, please tell the listeners where they can go to find out more about you and your awesome interior design business and your co-working spaces. Best way to do is to find us on our website and I'm, you know, featured there's team information on there. You can find out about me there too. So it's 25ncoworking.com. So it's 25 North Coworking, but it's 25ncoworking.com or workplacestudio.net. That's our interiors firm. Awesome, guys, go and check it out. If you're thinking about getting a, a studio or an office there and you kind of don't want to take the full commitment, go out and have all those real estate headaches and worry about the toner in your printer, check out 25ncoworking.com or your interior design website, which was what again? Workplacestudio.net. Awesome. Mara, thank you so much for joining us today on the podcast. Thank you so much, Darla. So what do you think? Are you getting lonely? Are you tired of looking at yourself in the mirror? Are you tired of having Zoom calls in killer shirts and pajama bottoms? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying anyone on this microphone is doing that. <clears throat> or are you just tired of having Zoom calls, period? Right? You, you just really want to kind of work in person. I miss it. I do miss it. And I'm telling you, I'm not someone who needs to be with people all the time. I love my Darla time. I love my space. I can work very independently. So I can't even imagine if you're someone that needs that, all, you know, that interaction, that human connection. You guys must be really going crazy if I'm going crazy. I like the solution of having, having like dipping your toe in that office, having that office to fulfill that. But you know what? Guess what? On Fridays, see ya. I'm out of here. I'm working. I'm teleworking. I'm working from home. You guys can do the same. I think that we love it now, right? We work. We love working from home. That's one thing the pandemic has taught us. We love being able to say, hey, Fido has to go pee. Let me step away from my desk for a minute. Let me take him outside. Let me take him for a walk. Let me get pizza at 1245 instead of at, you know, 1300. Military time. Can you tell I was a cop? <laughs> but after a while, right? It's like, ah, okay, all right. This is this is my house. I'm tired of staring at these four walls. Let me just let me go out and have some human interaction. So that's a nice solution. And she's right. If you listen to um, Rex Rogosh's episode, I forget the number. It'll be in the show notes. If you go to wingnetsocial.com/podcast. We're sourcing stuff digitally or per project anyway, right? Not too many designers unless you're a huge multi-million dollar design firm. And you, I know you're out there. I know you're listening. We have these clients, actually. Keep a huge inventory of vendor samples on demand. You're sourcing from the Googles, from the internet. And you're picking out samples that you think clients would like for that particular project, showing them one, two, three, A, B, C, D. Here you go. Here's a good, better, best. Bada bing, bada boom. Here's your design, Mr. Client. And then recycling that sample, sending it back, using it somewhere else or, or whatever it is that you're doing with that. So we don't have the same kind of need for that huge storage space. A lot of us don't. I'm speaking for myself. Some of you still might. But there are co-working solutions that have a little bit of storage for that. will serve that purpose. You can go in, reserve that board meeting, and press the heck out of your clients and then say, sayonara. I'm going home. <laughs> I'm working from home. All right. I've 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 had enough peopling for today. It served my needs. See ya. See you later. So I like it. I like the solution. I'm actually going to check out her co-working office in Alexandria. It's it's not too far for me to go there a couple days a week. It's not too close, though, either. And full disclosure, Mara, <laughs> it's a little bit of a schlep, but I like driving and listening to podcasts. So you know what? I miss that, too. All right, guys. Thanks for tuning in uh, this week. Remember, these are all new shows. Uh, thanks for also... I forgot to say this last week, or did I? I don't know. Menopause is a <coughs> My memory is crap. But um, thanks for letting me take a couple months off last year. I kind of needed it. As you guys know, 2021 was a <coughs> show for me personally with a divorce and a move and a yada, yada, yada and business restructuring. But it was also super amazing. I met my fiance. Well, I didn't meet my fiance, but she became my fiance, let's say. Bought a beautiful house in Maryland. So uh, a lot of that, a lot of irons in the fire. I just decided to take a couple months off from the podcasting. So thank you so much for being patient and uh, staying tuned and tuning in now. I appreciate you guys so much. And we're up to, this is episode, what, 247? 
Yeah, 247. Wow. Can you imagine that? Okay. That's it for this week, guys. We'll see you next week. Remember, get out there, get uncomfortable, and be great. You've reached the end of this episode of Wingnut Social, but that's only the first step into accelerating your business the Wingnut way. Head on over to wingnutsocial.com to see how we can help you take your business from social mediocre to social media master. Let's have a moment of silence for the profundity of that statement. Who specializes in, you know, stuff. (laughs) Third time's the charm. What can be the harm? I could really go for some chicken parm. Good boy, Mango.